for your cast of the Why So Serious show on BladesRadioOnline.com. Hello and welcome into the SWX Helena Home Studio. I'm your host, Jeremy Schnell of the Why So Serious show alongside Jesse Morrison and Matt Kling. How are you guys doing today, Jesse? Jesse, what is happening in NASCAR? They banned the Confederate flag. Yeah. Woo! Yeah, because of Bubba Wallace. Uh, they, they banned the Confederate flag, which is a symbol for... Um, well, I mean, like, Bubba Wallace was, like, the leader of the whole situation. Yeah, I mean... If, like, if it he, wasn't really because of him. Like, yeah, well, if, if he had been done a while ago. Before, if like, he hadn't spoken out about it, they, they wouldn't have banned it. And, you know, it's, it's great that they banned it because, you know, it's a symbol of hate and a time in our country where we weren't unified. So I'm glad to get that out of, out of the sport. I will expect some fans to somehow sneak it in and for that to be a huge controversy down the road. Um, we, I, I think everybody supported it except for uh, NASCAR crappy truck series driver, Ray Cicerelli or racist Cirelli as people are liking to call him these days. Um, yeah. So he can get out. Uh, Marty Smith had a great phrase about him getting out of the sport on the Levitard show last week. Just go listen to hit the interview with, Levitard show there last week but um yeah it's it's good good for NASCAR they're they're being more diverse they've got Kyle Larson out of the sport now racist Sorelli um yes they're just just a good good for NASCAR but um but I'm 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 furious about uh what what is happening to Bubba Wallace right now and what is happening to Bubba Wallace right now explain well he is he is apparently not receiving the uh, any any sponsorship offers for next season? Um, there's a quote that he said, um, "Nope, nothing." Wallace said Friday. In the- oh, unbelievable! Come on! Come on! Oh, Jesse, it is time for the magic creator content. What is in the box today, Jesse? I have to ask this question. Yeah. Um, what is your favorite mid two thousands random baseball player? Wow, <laughs> wow! I'm gonna go with Alfredo Amezaga. I don't know if he's my favorite, but he's on the top of my head. Lou Ford. Wow. Tadahito Iguchi. Oh, he was good. He filled in for Chase Utley when he was uh, when he was injured, which happened a lot. Well, no, Chase Utley was injured like maybe once or twice. Chase Utley, it was when Chase Utley broke or his hand broken by John Lannon. Remember John Lannon? Yeah, I just referenced him the other day. Yeah, John Lannon in his major league debut plunks Chase Utley in his hand. I was at that game. It was on a Thursday. I remember afternoon. that. I remember that. Uh, Donnie Murphy. Who? Donnie Murphy. 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 I don't know who that is. I've heard of Donnie Donnie Murphy. Murphy. Walk off singles. He he was, he was a bench player, and he'd come in in the ninth inning to hit for the pitcher. And but was he was but was he mid two thousands or was he late two thousands or early twenty tens? Donnie Bleepin Murphy. You gotta look this guy up because I I think of Daniel Murphy, but I mean I th- I Donnie Murphy rings a bell. Though. Donnie Murphy sounds like he should have played in like the 1950s for the Yankees and been there like Donnie Murphy started his career in 2004 and ended it in 2014 he played for the Marlins in 2010 and 2011 okay but so so the time frame was off we, we were talking about in 2012 Jeremy mid 2000s you're in the 2010s yeah but he was it, mid it, this, this counts 2004 2005 yeah 2007 2008 yeah Donnie okay. and Murphy Marlins legend. Really bad. Like, one of the worst players I've ever seen. Literally one of the worst players I've ever seen. His but, career numbers are... He, had walk, he, he hit walk-offs. Really he bad. Strange. His career high in games is 52. All right, you, you want to move? Show you one of the walk-offs? No, not really. There's, there's many uh, videos of Donnie Murphy walk-offs. Moving on, Matt. Matt wants to go to sleep. <laughs> Already, I'll put that on the poll. 
Um, does Matt always want to just go to no, sleep? No, no, don't put that on the poll. For love of God, don't put that on the poll. Um, anyway, um, moving on from NASCAR because can I please finish what I was saying? It really wasn't controversial. Yeah, and I, I didn't want to, and I didn't want to make a counterpoint. So go ahead. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he's not getting it. Bubba Wallace is not getting any spot. According to him, is not getting to any sponsorship um, interest for next season. And I think that's ridiculous. There's got to be some company that will do the right thing. And, and I believe Bubba Wallace and, um, you know, because of what we've seen with Colin Kaepernick, uh, but some company out there, some respected company, you know, should, should do the right thing and back him. Well, here's the issue. The respected companies don't respect NASCAR. NASCAR does not have, draw good ratings It'll draw people to tracks, massive tracks, as long as fans can go. But you look at the sponsorship shift over the past decade, there have been a lot of sponsors that have left oh, NASCAR. Oh, he said shift with a I T. Know. Yeah, I yeah. said shift. Sponsorship shift. Yeah, but unless you're Joe Gibbs racing. With Yeah, unless you're Joe Gibbs racing. But Joe Gibbs is... M&M's, FedEx, Sirius But, uh, M, but, but understand Cops. that... Bubba Wallace is driving Richard Petty's number 43. That's a hollowed car to be driving. Now, granted, and I don't want to say this, but Bubba Wallace hasn't won a race in the Cup Series. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the people that get the good sponsors, the solid sponsorships, the Denny Hamlins who have the FedExes, the Kyle Bushes with the M&Ms, Martin Truex with Bass Pro Shops, um, Brad Keselowski with uh, Mil- uh, Miller Light and Discount Tire. Uh, Kevin Harvick with Bush Light. You know all these uh, all these solid sponsorships. You know they they go to guys that are winning races. Ryan Newman with Oscar Mayer. Yeah, um, I mean, I will, I will say that I knew, like, I know who Bubba Wallace is, and I'm not. Everyone I'm, now knows who Bubba Wallace. But I knew is. who he was before all. Of Listen, yeah, I'm not a NASCAR. You're a sports fan, fan though. You, you've heard, you've seen probably news about him, you know, on the ticker on ESPN. Yeah, I mean that the, he should be getting some solid offers, and I hope that Richard Petty keeps him. I don't know the terms of his contract, but you know he's he's making a name for himself for being a a trendsetter for being for being bold, essentially. Like, think Danica Patrick. I don't, I really don't want to compare the two, but like, but think, you know, I remember when Danica Patrick moved over to NASCAR and there was a lot of speculation. She got her, she kept, she retained her GoDaddy sponsorship from her IndyCar days. But, um, you know, I I really think that Bubba Wallace deserves to continue racing and I hope he does. And I hope he starts winning because he's, He's an interesting so guy. Young. Like there's a lot of chance and the Richard Petty car that Richard Petty Motorsports doesn't have the, you know, track record of being a really well running team other than Richard Petty. He's not really ran very successfully. And I think that has a lot to do with the car, not the driver for his team. Yeah. Cause Joe yeah. Gibbs always has those great cars. Now this poses the question. If you guys were a NASCAR driver, what would your sponsorship be? I would go Goldfish. Yep, that'd be, be Petbridge Farms. Actually, Bubba Wallace has a has a Goldfish car. I want I want the original Goldfish packet on my car. Mine would be Mountain Dew. And With Dale Earnhardt Jr. You go Mountain Dew and Matt Black would be. Like matte black car with the green. No, no, I would do the Mountain Dew green colored car. Right, no, but like you put the green in the middle of all the matte black. No, no. You're it's going all full green. Green. Yeah, all green. Okay. It's all green. <laughs> uh, nice purple and white Taco Bell car. Ooh, ooh. So it would be yum. Because that's yeah, but but I would want I would want to drive the Taco Bell car. Yeah, but you know, you hit me with the Pedro Farge thing, so I gotta hit you with the Yum thing. You know, I, sometimes because I I could I could I drive the car that is the Pizza you, Hut breadstick. Okay, no, no, but like, would you? Yeah, would you change to like KFC every once in a while and like oh, go back to Taco Bell? 
number one, I'd be forced to because if KFC was was hawking the bowl or something that with the mashed potatoes and the corn and the chicken, like they would put that on my hood and I would have to say, okay. And then I have to say, uh, in our KFC original chicken bowl, uh, Chevrolet here, we did really well. Yeah. But you wouldn't be in the, in the, <laughs> in the winner's circle or whatever they just hit. What? You I, was a big time NASCAR driver? I mean, I guess you drive like a NASCAR driver on the road. That's a conversation for another day. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so moving on to uh, the PGA Tour, it returned. Uh, did uh, did Spieth blow this? Like, how do you say it? Spiefy. Spie. Spiefy. Good. Um, Spie? Uh, kind of, but like he he didn't he didn't really like have the lead going into Sunday and then just like choke away. So not he was really. choking it. But there was a lot. He he was kind of choking it. But there was a lot of big names up at the top of the leaderboard. You had, you know, Bubba Watson. You mentioned Jordan Spieth, Bryson DeChambeau, Justin two, Rose. They were we, up there. We, we've talked about two Bubbas on this show. How about that? Yeah, I'm a big Bubba. What Bubbas Bubba. are we going to talk about tonight? At Bubba W. Bubba W and Bubba W. They, if they're in the same – Give me uh, give me the – Actually, Bubba W A and Bubba W A. If they were in the same kindergarten class, that would be very difficult. Because you say you'd say Bubba W A L and Bubba uh, W A T. Are we gonna talk about Bubba Ray Dudley tonight? Yeah, what is the, What is your? Uh, do you guys have a Mount Rushmore of Bubbas? <laughs> Bubba Gump Shrimp. Yeah, Bubba Gump uh, Shrimp. Bubba Bubba Sponge. Bubba Bubba. <laughs> Bubba Bubba's terrible. <laughs> no, you got to get the green apple flavor. Put it on the poll. Is the Hubba Bubba green apple good? Bubba Sterling, baseball player. You mean Starling? Bubba Starling, yes. My the Royals, he's a bust. Yeah, he, he is. Like their top 10 pick in 2012 and finally made the majors this past season. Yeah, because the Royals suck. But Green Apple. Hey, they won a World Series and went to the World Series in that time frame. So. They suck now. Yeah, Whit Merrifield is one of the best hitters in baseball. That's very Jorge true. Soler. Yeah, Jorge Soler hit. 40 dingers is the green what is it is the green apple green apple hubba bubba i didn't get it that often but when i did you know i'd, I'd bring it to my baseball games and they'd be gone really quickly because my friends would want some why you, you didn't chew uh, big league chew big league chew uh, i'm cool I, yeah you gotta get hubba bubba and big league chew one or the other hubba no, no, my favorite. gum then then you don't have any time for seed. You just to be cool, and you got Big League Chew. You didn't have to get Big League Chew to chew gum in baseball. Plus, you, you didn't – wait, you didn't – I didn't chew gum that often while playing baseball. I, I, I had sunflower seeds. Yeah, and, and uh, yeah, you, you couldn't have two things of gum because then you wouldn't have time for your sunflower seeds. But you, you know what I did sometimes, which was a really big mistake? Um, I had the sunflower seeds in one cheek, and then I tried to eat them and chew gum at the same time, which yeah. always just ended up with it going together, and it was really disgusting, and I just ended up spitting everything out in the trash. Yeah, yeah that, that Wait, is... You, spit it out, you didn't spit it out on the field? You spit it out in the trash? If I had the gum with me, I would spit it out on the trash. citizen, that's why. Yeah, I, I, didn't want, I didn't want to do the gum on the field because, you know, I, I always got, was scared of putting, you know – Well, scared. you played outfield. So, like, if you spit it out in the infield, you can cover it up with third. It's fine. Yeah, well, I, I played some infield, too. I played some third, played some second. Uh, I get, you're too tall to play that game. What's have great arms. Dog crap or, uh, or bubble gum? What did you say? I said, what's worse to step on? Oh. Dog crap or bubble gum? Bubble gum, because then you have to get new cleats. Like, it's over by then. No, it's not. Yeah, it's over. I, uh, a dog, dog, cra crap, dog crap, your shoes are going to smell. Right, but you can, you can wash them off, really. Like, really yeah, but you can wash off gum but, and it will not make your shoes smell. Is this a poll? Yes, yeah. I would like this to be a poll. What's worse to step on, dog crap or bubble gum? With baseball cleats. No, just in, in, in general. Dog crap's going to win unanimously. It better. Um, so you're talking about golf. Uh, I didn't pay attention. I'm sorry. I heard I, it went off. Good. Jesse, did you sit and watch golf on some, this weekend? I did. Um, and you know what? I, it made me want to go play golf. So today I played nine holes. Played pretty well after my 
hole one, 11. 11 on hole one. Nice. Yeah, but, you know, I, I, just needed, I just needed to settle down, and I did. And I had some, I had a couple pars, or one par, and then um, a lot of just regular bogeys, which I'm fine with. Um, yeah, but uh, let me just say that. Uh, Who ended up winning the, the PGA Tour? Some guy named Daniel Berger. I don't know if he was a bacon cheeseburger or a, a burger. mushroom <laughs> burger or I think he or a hamburger or a Five Guys burger. Like I, I don't Did know. You ever put a burger at the at the end of one of your friends' names? Like people, sometimes people call me Schnellenberger. Like when I was younger. Yeah, because there's a famous Schnellenberger. Right. Yeah. Was but he like, a broadcaster? Howard Schnellenberger. Yeah. Well, what's what's he famous for? Um, but yeah, no, people like that's what people would do back in the day. They'd put burger at the end of people's names. All right. Well, uh, well, I should play this amazing sound. It's really the only good part about, well, the fir first good part about this whole golf tournament was, um, was Bryson DeChambeau. He, he, he ate a lot during, uh, <laughs> the quarantine. Now, let's just say that. Um, but I, I couldn't, I think. He bulked up, like, muscle-wise, but also, like, stomach-wise. So, I don't really know how that happens, but I think it was the five protein milkshakes they said he drank every day, which I don't understand why you need to do that when you, you, you play golf for a living. But whatever. Whatever, whatever floats your boat, Bryson. Um, but, but Jim Nance had a, had a great moment here. Um, he messed up a read. He messed up an ad read. So, he I says – well, I'm just gonna play it, but let's just, let's just say the guy co sign flashes up here. It, you can you can picture this. The Charles Schwab Challenge is sponsored by Allstate. Get a quote. I'm sorry, by Geico. And by Conica Minnesota. <laughs> is Allstate uh no, like the, the sign Geico was up there. He says, but "Like it's not state a sponsor at all." I don't. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think. Well, all the insurance companies feel like they blend together: State Farm, Progressive, Geico, Nationwide. Now, Progressive doesn't fit in with those because all of those companies have great commercials, and Progressive's commercials, for the most part are terrible except for the ones where you're turning into your parents that is liberty mutual they're all liberty insurance companies liberty. That think they're that just spend millions of dollars on advertising money with stupid commercials we are farmers bum, ba, dum, bum, bum. about farmers jeez there's a lot yeah there is uh, the general was shack and like their 2000s animation for a great low rate, you can get online, go to the general, and save some time. Remember insurance? Yeah, they're still around. But yeah, they're like yeah. the one that they're the one that says, "Okay, we don't have to spend a bunch of money on ads because we do the real thing." You know, they're 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 like. Do you have any other golf thoughts? Um, no. No. I guess I'm happy that it's back. I mean, I guess, too. I thought I wanted it back. Yeah. I really didn't watch that much golf. Time for everyone's favorite segment. Well, kind of. Life moves pretty fast. You don't stop and look around once in a while. You could miss it. There are no two words in the English language more harmful than good job. It always have passed. Here's Movies with Matt. Matt. Hello. All right. Dirty Dancing. Whoa. No. It's like the same movie. No, it's not. Similar. But let me preface this by saying that I am intrigued by the new Pete Davidson flick, The King of Staten Island. Oh, yeah. I want to watch. $20 to rent. I intend on watching it, and I'm even willing to spend the $20 to rent it, which is uh -huh. a little bit high. Maybe next weekend. But the originator of this segment, Mr. Max said it is worth the price of rental. Now, Dirty Dancing is a movie that I will turn on toward the end of it whenever it appears on my cable. And, and when I say the end, I mean the final scene in that ballroom 
with their cheesy join hands and hearts and voices, voices, hearts and hands. Fun fact, that movie was filmed like 45 minutes away from my hometown. Yeah, awesome. That, that, number, yeah. that, that cheesy number <laughs> through the end of the film where the ballroom literally turns into a, a modern nightclub, it has, in that short span of time, it has three iconic scenes. The most iconic dance number in film history. The most memorable F move. What's that? Footloose. No, no. The most memorable F U in movie history. Nobody puts baby in the corner. And then the most snarkiest apology in film history. When I'm wrong, I, I say I'm wrong. Now, two words that come to mind in, in this film besides the dirty and the dancing privilege and rebellion privilege in the fact that this is a film set at a summer retreat in the Catskills where all of the staffers are Ivy League students that are told to romance the guest daughters. Even though that wasn't the Catskills, it was actually the Blue Ridge Mountains, but they're very similar. Blue Ridge Mountains are a little taller. <laughs> Let me no. finish my rant. <laughs> no, I'm not, no. No, no, stay. Stay where you're seated. <laughs> all right, yeah, so they had all their all the staffers were Ivy League students and they were told to romance the, desk, the guest daughters. And of course, there were foxtrot lessons. But rebellion in the fact mainly that the title character, Francis Baby Houseman, snuck off to get lessons with Johnny Castle. That other the baby, again, stealing money to help with someone's botched abortion. And of course, the main rebellious part of all, Johnny Castle being fired barging in at the end of the summer talent show to do that dance number with baby and a court which of course came with the iconic lift and all is said and done and they did a remake of that film on abc three years ago but so bad it's so bad what are your but what are your thoughts on dirty dancing though i feel like we just i like it I, I i like it because because of the iconicness of the movie and the fact that it was a low budget affair too. Not the best, uh, it's not the best 80s movie though. It was set in 1963 too. So okay, well, most of the very, days, a lot of those 80s very movies privileged, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Racist? Why? Privileged, I said. Why? Wow, that, that movie was a budgeted $5 million and made 214.6 at the box office. Yeah, and it airs almost every other weekend on cable. Does it really? I, yeah. Jennifer Grey. Paramount Network, Pop TV. It's not even the best Jennifer Grey movie. It's probably not the best Patrick Swayze movie. And definitely not the best Jerry Orbach associated thing either. Yeah, fil this filming. Is bad, this is why I'm bad with this segment. I don't no actors by name that are. filming took place in mountain lake virginia and lake lure north carolina jerry okay. orbach was on the original law and order he's also dead so is patrick swayze right and patrick swayze is also dead jeremy was, i got that right <laughs> you didn't kill him good job he was in uh, roadhouse he was in ghost um, he also sang one of the songs in dirty dancing she's like the wind I get him and David Hasselhoff confused. They look alike. They do. And they were a little old to be playing their roles in the in the eighties. The uh Hoff. -huh. Anyway. So yeah. that's my movie. I got a couple. Jeremy watched this. I don't know if you watched this, Matt. Matt, I'll I'll go into this one before I get I've I've almost finished uh the Quibi documentary Blackballed. Um about the Donald, Donald Sterling situation. It's very good. It's like seven little mini, or it's 12 little mini parts of seven minutes. And I, I like the way the documentary is made. Um, it definitely is, is a documentary that needed to be made. And it's very relevant for, for these times that we have yep. going on, that we can't tolerate people like Donald Sterling, especially in sports. Yeah. He might be the weirdest individual I've ever heard of in my life. Yeah. Literally the stories, like he didn't want JJ Redick on the team because he, he didn't like white players which, what yeah he, he didn't like he didn't like white players um so he didn't so he he argued with doc rivers to not trade for jj reddick which was just weird um but did you guys watch the steroid documentary 
of the summer, long gone summer. I need to see it at some point. It's good. It's good. Uh, do, you, do you want us to give away the ending, <laughs> I know what happens. McGuire <laughs> hit more homers than Sosa, yeah. and uh, neither are Hall of Famers, and I don't think either of the, those teams made the playoffs that year. Am I correct? The Cubs did. Cubs did. Um, Cubs did. Okay. Uh, Sosa said at the uh, that um, he doesn't understand why the the fam the family that owns the Cubs wants him to come clean about using steroids because everybody <laughs> used steroids. That was like the the best Sammy Sosa quote. I, I get the feeling that he doesn't really like interviews and doesn't really want to talk in interviews. And as somebody that is very hostile when being yeah. interviewed, because it oh, was yeah. very much, it was very much like McGuire and then Sosa that they talked about. Well, Probably. because McGuire, McGuire did win, but the, the home run chase, but like. Sosa was the MVP. Sosa talked like eight times in the entire documentary. Yeah, he just he just doesn't look. He looks like angry all the time when he gets interviewed. In my opinion. Yeah, and you remember the third the um, E sixty that they did on him? He walked yeah. off. Jeremy Shat, when Jeremy Shat was interviewing. Him, so. Yeah, I, I just don't think that you know. I don't think that he likes. I don't know if he really cares to you know go back into the past. I think he's pretty happy with what happened in his career. I don't think he cares about the Hall of Fame. Um, I think he just kind of Sammy Sosa just kind of does Sammy Sosa, and Sammy if anybody Sosa. doesn't like that, he just doesn't give a crap. Yeah, <laughs> desk kid again. It's the second desk kid in two weeks. Jeffy. Nice. Sammy Sosa doesn't care about what other people think about him. We could use more of the, those things. I liked the point that they made. I don't remember who who made this point, um, but like, really nice people can do bad things. Um, yes. Example, baseball players. Also, not really illegal in the United States. Was it? I think it might have been Costas that said that. Yeah, I think it was, I think it was Costas. But um, Costas also said that, um, you know, that it doesn't count in his personal record book, basically. They don't. They don't, because they're completely ridiculous numbers. Mark McQuire was a 34-year-old who had come off of a bunch of injury-plagued seasons to you know suddenly hit 70 home runs like it's 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 ridiculous to these numbers are ridiculous but was it fun are these people not terrible it saved no. baseball yeah it literally saved baseball it was fun it was enjoyable should they get in the hall of fame probably not sammy sosa probably not wouldn't have hit you know even 40 home runs without steroids but like but like I, i'm just i'm just saying that like you know, Sammy Sosa was also a raw talent, and Mark McGuire was also really good at hitting the ball very far before he used that. Yeah, but he was like Mark Reynolds and Chris Davis. <laughs> like, he was like a 200 hitter. Adam Dunn. Like, we've seen a bunch of these guys. Um, like, Mark McGuire is Adam Dunn on steroids. I still think that Barry Bonds should make the Hall of Fame. Yes, because he was really good before Stiff. Before steroids, he hit but, more than he hit more home runs without steroids than he did with steroids. Yeah, or at least that we know of. I mean, they were still a thing in the early '90s. They weren't as prevalent, but they were still a thing in the early '90s. And I, you know, I just think that I, I just think that we 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 shouldn't judge these people as like terrible human beings because no. no, oh, because Mark McGuire came off as likable. Yeah, this Sosa country. comes off as likable. Well, no, I, but I'm saying, like, he came off as really likable because you, you think, like, oh, cheater. You know, like, when people think of Mark McGuire, the first word that comes to mind is cheater, right? Yeah. I can guarantee you that on that 25-man Cardinals roster, at least 20 of those guys were on steroids. At least 20 of them. On the Cubs roster, at least 20 of them. I, I will tell you right now that I think that at least 20 players per team were on steroids back in that era. No facts to back it up, but I still reckless think, speculation. Is that what I'm hearing? Reckless speculation. But back in the day, players just don't look like that anymore. No. <laughs> like, um, McGuire, his arms were like this big. Oh yeah, I mean they're still that big. Oh, um, yeah. Kevin Rodriguez still had 31 big. home runs in '98 for the Cubs. He was the second leading guy behind Sosa, who had 66. Hit 31. Henry Rodriguez. Never heard of him. Yeah. There, um, you, there you go. 
Another funny part I thought was the pitcher who gave out the uh, home run to McGuire to pass Maris. Um, they had him to get his thoughts about like how pissed he was when it first happened. I think he's still pissed. <laughs> yeah, he was pissed. I think he's pissed at Sosa still. Like Sosa came and congratulated a Cardinals player on a record against his own team. Cardinals they still made the playoffs. I yeah, mean, like... but Cardinals Cubs is Yankees Red Sox of the National League. So it's yeah. like I thought that was really cool to see though. Yeah, sportsmanship cool, sportsmanship but... isn't like that anymore. Second. I... Second most home runs on the 98 Cardinals was Roy Lankford with 31. Can you imagine if, can you imagine though, if like Mark McGuire and Sammy Sosa and Barry Bonds and all those guys had all the like launch angle, like analytics guys telling them how, they would have hit like a hundred home runs in a season. It would have been ridiculous. If Stanton is healthy and gets on a roll, he could do it. And Royds. So I saw someone on Twitter yesterday that that said um, that this documentary makes Stanton's uh, 59 yeah. a couple years ago look really impressive. So should yeah. have like third in the MVP. No. The, the Are he, Blackman and Nolan Arenado's seasons were – actually, Joey Votto's Joey Votto season. Joey, the Joey Votto is the only good argument. But, like, everybody was trying to argue uh, Goldschmidt when Goldschmidt lost in every single category to Stanton except for a batting average. Yeah, but, but if you look at Blackman and Arenado, those are the guys that really should have won that year. No, no, it was Votto. Votto was the only one that I could have made an argument. Stanton hit 59 home runs. That's yeah, insane, But he struck dude. out a billion times and hit, like, 281. Doesn't matter. He almost, he almost led that team to the playoffs. That team. Go look at that team. That's 2017 team. Marlins. What? Other than, other than um, the pitching staff, that team had Christian Yelich. Yes, he Who was. not Christian Yelich yet. He like, 298 Marcelo that year. Zuna. Marcelo Zuna. Um, Marcel was really good that year. Wasn't D. Gordon still on the Gordon team? On that team. Yeah, okay, yeah. Don't don't tell me. Justin Bohr, uh, uh, the catcher that's now in the Phillies. Eighteen Real Muto, best catcher. Real Muto. Muto. That lineup was loaded. You can't tell me that the, if they had had one starting pitcher, they would have been the wild card team that year. So don't give me a oh there weren't that many great players. No, there was tons of that team was loaded, stacked. Their lineup was Real Muto, Bohr, Gordon, Rojas, Dietrich, Ozuna, Yelich, and Stan. They had Ro- Rojas and, 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 and Dietrich in the lineup, dude. Like, Dietrich yeah, was. But every team has, every great team in history has a bad. Dietrich was good. Oh, the Yankees last year were insane. Wins. Derek Dietrich was really good last year. The Yankees lineup last year was insane, one through nine. Yeah, because they're the Yankees, but this is like the Marlins. And, and in 2017, Derek Dietrich had a pretty good season. He was a good, like, 7-8 hitter in the lineup. You know, I this wanted Danny to be a bit. We're sitting here talking about baseball from three years ago. Because, yeah, why don't we, why don't we uh, go into the next segment? Yeah, yeah. 2020 baseball. Where are you? Why aren't you going to be here? Rob Manfred sucks. Rob Manfred is the worst commissioner in the history of sports. Is it all his fault, though? No, it's not. It's but not his fault, no, but, like, he's terrible. In the season. Like, he's also not doing anything to get the players and the owners any closer. Okay, he has the power. Number one, I took a class with Commissioner Bud Selig. Yeah. Which says that the commissioner has the right to do what is in the best interest of baseball. So, Rob Manfred, yes, he's employed by the owners, but – he can do what is in the best interest of baseball. And if in his mind, playing a 48-game season is in the best interest of baseball, he should implement it because the players have said that they will play. Yeah. Um, and the, but the only thing that's holding it back is the owners for some reason. I don't think they think that they can make enough money. Oh, it's also the players, dude. The players want more money. Yeah, but – but if they play the 48 games, they will get their full money. Why? No, that's not what the owners want. That's not. The yeah, players. but if Manfred Im- implements that, then they'll play. The, the, the players should not get paid full salary for playing 
120 less games than they usually do. They, they wouldn't get full salaries, Jeremy. They would get the full salary that they agreed to to cut to in March. This is the whole problem right they, here. They should, what they should do is they should get what they would get paid per game as, in the, as what they yeah. would for the full season and yeah. get, get paid that singular pay for every game. Why is that run. so hard, right, Matt? In an Why abbreviated so season, it makes no sense that like – that that's not going to be the case. This is why this is why it's hard. This is what like I don't think you see. So basically, they agreed to a pay cut in March. Yeah. When they left, they that was an agreement. They agreed to that pay cut, and now the owners want to pay them less than what they agreed upon. So the players are angry that they that the owners want them to pay to be paid less than they agreed upon but the owners are saying that this is what we agreed upon if there are fans in the stands so that's where like maybe the owners have a little bit of you know leeway here but i i just think that the commissioner should go in there and just say okay we're playing this amount of baseball and it's going to happen and uh owners can you know like be mad about it players can be mad about it and we can have baseball because it's the best thing for the sport and it's the best thing for fans. I, I, but right now he says he's not 100% sure, even though last week he said he was 100% sure, just in my opinion, to make the draft look better. Look, there is a um, – what I took out of part of, you know, this the, all this coverage is that it's not just, you know, the money split and whatnot. It's that they want to end the season at a normal time, at like the end of October. You can't do that. You like, can't do that in Minneapolis. You can't do that in New York. It's going to snow. It's going to rain. But, but here's how I propose that they could realistically still do for a 2020 season. They could play 80 games. Opening day, July 31st. The end of the regular season. That's out of the question at this point. October 21st. 80-game regular season. All the playoffs, play them in Florida. Yeah, play them in, in Florida, play them in – Arizona. Arizona, play, play them in some sort of dome stadium. Texas, Houston and, and the Rangers stadium. Yeah, the Rangers stadium. stadium. We, we could open up the new Rangers stadium and show everybody what they were supposed to see this year. Yeah. But, but the thing is, they could seize their league. They could have their playoffs end the day before Thanksgiving if they want to. And, and have the fans' attention that late. The NBA is only going to go to early October. Hockey's probably going to go to early October. They're, they're also scared to go against football, though. They go against football every year. They go against football year. every year. Kind of. Every year, Sunday night football competes they with be going uh, against – the, Like, their playoffs would be – playoffs would be going against, like, like the, the – Regular the, season, though. The, the regular, it's what they do. At, they do that every year. But their playoffs are going against, like, the chase to the NFL playoffs is what I'm saying. Yeah, they're still giving you a month left of the NFL. Like, yeah. it's not – no. Um, and baseball fans will watch baseball over football because baseball fans are hardcore. And, 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 and Fo- if the World Series is playing, Fox will air it on network TV. So yeah. they will get the, the, the reach that, that it deserves. Fox would not be happy. Fox, ESPN, and Turner – are not happy except Turner decided to agree to this new billion dollar that's deal. why it's this is all ridiculous because yeah. the the owners can afford to just pay their players their full salaries because they just got a billion dollar tv deal I'm hey, telling you right now the Marlins cannot why they don't have a good tv deal no because their owner has no money he spent a billion dollars on the team and has no money to invest into it after that they have a tv deal barely they barely have a tv deal like they have no they have like less than a forty million dollar payroll. Well, that's that's because they got they gutted the team before they they had to because they don't have any money to pay the team. They spent the, this owner spent all of his earnings ever on the Marlins and had no money to invest in the team. We're gonna talk about food for a second. Jesse and I have been talking about this for a couple of days now, and I think I have I think I've got a little idea of why Jesse has been talking. Hundred percent. No, I but, I can make. I can make a marshmallow nice and golden brown. No. Okay. Can, I explain? can I explain? Okay, so the correct way to cook a marshmallow for s'mores is to make it golden brown. 
just spin it a bunch of times, you know, just get it nice and right. But Jesse doesn't know how to do that. No, I do know what how to do that. Jesse does is he just sticks it in, gets it burnt, gets it burnt, takes it out, blows it off, and puts it on the thing. Because he does, he's, he's, because you're impatient. Just say it. I'm impatient. Just say it. I'm impatient. I can't make a golden brown marshmallow. No, no, I can. Yes, it does take a long time, and it's a waste of time. But when you make a golden brown marshmallow, you don't cook it all the way through. You need to make that thing black. If it is not burnt, I'm not eating it. It doesn't taste as good, dude. It does. It tastes just as good. It tastes better. No. It tastes better. Matt, golden brown or burnt? Golden brown, not burnt. Thank you. It's the right way. It's You're the right way. You, you can't burn it, dude. Like, like I think you're just lazy. That's it. That's it. No, That's Jeremy, like, it today. Today. put it on the poll. Is Jesse lazy? No, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not putting that on the poll. Um, Jeremy, Matt, like medium like well steak. Matt, go ahead. Jair Jurgens. Wow, former Oriole. <laughs> All star. Yeah, That's he was great for a couple of years. What do they call that? A palindrome? What, what do they call it when you when the person when when it's like back to back things with the same letter? Sorry, with the same alliteration. Letter. Alliteration. What is a palindrome? Did I? What did I just do? I, I'll, another alliteration. Yeah, Jeremy, go, 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 to, go to the bathroom. <laughs> Matt, how do you like your steak cooked? Medium well. You're medium well too. Or medium, medium. Okay. Medium well, medium well. Yes, yes. That you change it to medium, Jeremy. Which no, is a, medium well. Come on. No, that's that's close to a little red. That's close to Trump. I can, but no. Here's the thing. Like I can, I can eat it medium rare. Like I don't care. I can eat it medium. Yeah, it's, it's but I like it better medium well. I've had it all ways. Trump likes his steak well done with ketchup. Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, that's that's a rumor. Uh, but Brandon, my dad also likes to steak well done, but not with ketchup. I can promise but, you. But but Brandon League, Brandon League. Wow. Yeah. Very, he, he wore a single digit. That's right. Mm-hmm. Is he a pitcher that wore a single digit? Yes. Oh, I thought he. I, for some reason, I thought he was a a fielder. Hey Jesse, remember Ty Wigginton? Yeah, he he, he didn't give me an autograph one time. He said. You can have a ball. And I said, no, I want an autograph. He said, they don't let us sign within 30 minutes prior to the game. This was at Fenway Park, by the way. I, I, uh, I was walking through the, the um, undergrounds of Sun Life, Hard Rock, Pro Player Park, Pro Player yeah. Stadium, Dolphin Stadium, oh, Dolphin Stadium, Land Shark, Stadium. Uh, Land Shark Park, Robbie. Land Shark Stadium, Joe Robbie Stadium. I was walking <laughs> through the, the bowels of that stadium during a game. And uh, I asked uh, Robert Andino for his autograph. Dino. Uh, yep. Yeah, uh, and and yeah, he said he couldn't sign it during the game. Uh, we like Robert Hart. Andino though. Lots of walk off hits for the Orioles. <laughs> Corey Hart. Corey Hart. Okay. Mariners legend. No, Mariners no. legend. He lives in the Valley. He lives in the Phoenix Valley, and um, his he he coaches a travel team that uh plays in baseball showcase tournaments and last year when I was working for baseball showcase and doing PA announcing for them um there was Corey Hart's team and I saw Corey Hart running around he was a really good player I was like well that's cool that's Corey Hart I ain't get to talk yeah he is he's got a lot of tattoos too. To, coming up later in the show we'll have Catherine Fitzgerald and I I forgot to ask her uh, uh, talk to her about how Larry Fitzgerald is taller than he seems on TV when you're in person when you see him in person really yeah, he's he's much taller in person than he looks. Like. A sloppy show. <laughs> we'll have Catherine Fitzgerald on later in the show. Matt yeah. Caps. Pardon? Matt Caps. Wow. Capper. Favorite chain steak restaurant. Hmm. Longhorn. You been there? Yeah, Longhorn. Texas say. Roadhouse. I've never been. I don't get steak there because I don't get steak out. Like it can be the nicest steak. No, 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 no. That's not why. It can be the nicest steakhouse in the world. They will still somehow not make cook my steak the right way. I just don't trust it. It doesn't usually happen to me. Well, that's because you get medium well. It's a lot easier, Jeremy. It's a lot easier for them to make medium well than just in between medium rare and medium. Like I like it, and the way my mom makes it, and the way it's, and the you know. 
I've never had a better steak than when my mom makes, they take like three hours for her to make. She like uh, broils them in the oven and then takes them out and like cooks them on the grill and they're just amazing. Jesse, you're just a picky eater. I'm not a picky eater. I'm the oh, least picky. Not more picky than me. <laughs> Bro, I would put pineapple on basically any sandwich, um, including probably peanut butter and jelly. That sounds good. Um, I'm going to throw up. Um, <laughs> can, we, can we start what are we doing? Because I have a, I have a lot of what are we doing today. Yeah, it's probably our last segment, too. All right. Um, yeah, before the pre-recorded segment. Yes, with Catherine Fitzgerald. What are we doing? What are we doing? Of the Arizona Republic. Um, have to throw that in there. Um, so my what are we doing today is uh, Gary Bettman not knowing Mike Greenberg's name. Uh, after every interview today, Mike Greenberg would get a, thanks, Mike, appreciate it, or whatever, something like that. Bettman did not say thanks, Mike. And therefore, Bettman does know, not know who the heck was interviewing him today. Gary Bettman doesn't watch ESPN. He probably watches the NHL. But he's been on Mike Greenberg's show multiple times. <laughs> Which one? The, the, radio, the former radio show or the Get Up show? The, the Wake Up show, whatever. They get do. Up? Yeah, yeah, nobody likes that show. Everybody just wants it to go back to Mike and Mike. We've had this like conversation. Get up. What? We've had this conversation before. <laughs> nobody likes Get Up. My Sorry. other, what are we doing is uh, Walmart. Why are you guys closing at 8.30? Like, aren't you guys supposed to be open like 24 hours? What's going on? Jeremy, it's called COVID-19. They have to keep up. We've had zero cases in the last month and a half here. <laughs> Let's wait. We'll, 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 I'll, we'll, we'll get caravans to come up to Montana and bring all the COVID to the state. Community. Anyway, we did have a protest the other day, so I am scared about that. Um, yeah. I was yeah. wearing a mask, if you must know. Go get a it. test. Just get a test at some point. Yeah. Soon. Have you gotten tested, Matt? I'm gonna stick that thing up uh, my nose. I have. They didn't stick it up my nose. They they did it in the like the throat. Yeah. Oh, th- oh, throat. Oh. Yeah, I did it before my FedEx job that I quit. <laughs> you had a FedEx job that you quit that you had and then quit. Yeah, for like a week and a half. It was the most horrible thing in the world, and so I I just couldn't take it anymore. And I was like, how much money am I making? Labor not for Jesse. What? Manual labor is not for you. Really not. It really isn't. Like it's I guess really, a bad back, so I do. Jeff, what are you doing? <laughs> I'm making money other ways. Okay. Devilsdigest.com. Crushcast. Make sure to go Crush check out the Crushcast this week. They had Tim Kirchin on because he takes all of our guests away from our show. Yeah, I'm thinking about reaching out to Zach Hampel. The Hamps. Uh do you have a what are we doing, Matt? Yeah, I do. The dude that ran onto the soccer pitch in Spain, like, how did you even get in the stadium? Did you see like, that, Jesse? Like that. Did you see the guy at the Barcelona? Yeah, game? I heard about it. I heard about it. Like, you went to take a picture with Messi. It's not a. It's not. What are you doing, guy? Because like, there's always that one idiot that does that sort of thing, like every week. But like, what are you doing? How are you even getting in the stadium? That's my question. I've watched these videos online where people sneak into stadiums and like climb to the top of them. That's pretty cool. I mean, like, don't do that because it's illegal, but like, it's pretty cool, but like, not cool because it's illegal. So don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I honestly have a feeling that there are going to be a lot of people that are not going to try to get on the court, but they're going to sneak into these games with. Oh, well, yeah. And they're just going to like hide like with binoculars under the seats. You know? Yeah, stow away. It's going to be, or they're going to go all the way to the top of the arena. And watch. There's a problem though. There, there's a problem with that though. They'll they'll just go naturally into fandom, and there'll be a bad call, and they'll be like, boo, boo, and then like somebody will just be like, wait, what? And then, <laughs> and then you'll see. Uh, it's just the pumped in crowd noise. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and then the person that is booing says, no, nah, it's the pumped in crowd noise. <laughs> Uh, my what are we doing is the people at Golfland, Splashland, or whatever it is in Arizona. Um, why are you going to a water park during this? We were just given the the um, hot spot moniker the other day or today, and really like, why are you going to Golfland? You know, in the water park, and just just stay home, keep your gatherings to to ten or under. Same people with the Old Town Scottsdale people. Just ten or under at your house. Make sure that no one's 
shown any signs of COVID or been exposed. You know, you can have fun at home. What are we doing? What are we doing? Like, this is ridiculous. What are we doing? What are we doing? I want to go to school in the fall, like, and see my friends. I want to see Kronkite people that I don't even like. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. That's a... Wow. Hey, just yeah, like, You know how much I would like to see, like, the people that I don't really like in Cronkite, I like, I love everyone though. Like I'm a lover, not a hater. You just said you don't like people. Not really. Like people that I, people that I've had conflicts with, those people, I'd still like to see them. Like, you know what, you know, you know. Where's the grumpy old man sound? I'm not being a grumpy old man. I'm being positive. Like, you know what? No, there's no beef anymore. I, I just want to see people. I want to say, hey man. Or, you know, I just want to say, like, how's, how's your summer? You know, get back to talking football. That's all that I want here. Just wear a mask when you go out. And I do. Everywhere I go. And, I, and then when I go to the gas station, I wear a glove, too. That's smart. Well, uh, is that it for your what are we doing, Jesse? Yeah. To yeah. Those people at the, at the nightclubs and at the, the water parks. Just. It, it, you know what water slides if you ever ridden them they're like not roller coasters you're on a water slide you're getting wet you're going down this like it's just a little hill it's like it's like basically a slide at a park okay it's we get it roller. you're a grumpy old man we get it all right i'm gonna set it over to past jesse who's gonna intro Catherine fitzgerald jesse how's it going welcome back to the why so serious show we are pleased to welcome on Catherine fitzgerald who covers the Arizona Cardinals and more, as her Twitter bio says, for the Arizona Republic. Uh, Catherine, how are you doing today? I'm good. Thanks for having me. So you're, you're fresh off of being furloughed. Uh, what did you do during that whole furloughed period? <laughs> yeah, a good question. And I caught up on sleep a little bit, but um, it was a pretty pivotal week for the United States as a whole. So mostly just all the coverage of everyone else I work with at the Republic to see what was happening in Phoenix and what was happening across the country. And, uh, and, and then you come back and you say, hi, I'm back from furlough today. We'll be hearing from Cardinals coach Cliff Kingsbury in about the, in about five minutes. And Larry Fitzgerald uh, says, nobody is happy, happier to see you back than I am. Fitzgerald stick together. What was your first reaction when you got that response from Fitz? Yeah, I was pretty in shock for a bit. I thought it was just kind of a, you know, normal, like, hey, I'm back to work tweet, wasn't expecting anything to come from it. Um, but I ended up sending it to my, my Fitzgerald family group text, which is like, wow, weird how none of you replied to this. Um, so, you know, try to have some fun with it with the family too. What is that? What was your first, do you remember your first encounter with Larry when you told him that your last name was Fitzgerald? Um, I don't think it was the first time I met him. I think it was a few times in just because, you know, usually in the locker room, it's like a big group of people and there's not always an easy time to introduce yourself. And I, for a while, wasn't covering the team super consistently. So I think the first time I covered him was at one of his charity events. Um, but training camp two years ago, when I realized I was going to be on the beat a bit more, I figured I should probably go ahead and introduce myself to everyone anyway but especially um someone with the same last name so um it's fun to share that with you know a player like Larry Fitzgerald on a team you cover and generally a good last name anyway yeah I agree um and speaking of Fitz he's uh he's been pretty um outspoken recently during this uh this difficult time in our country um how important has that been to just in general and especially to his teammates yeah, I think it's been um, it's been really interesting watching how players are speaking out on this in so many different ways. Um, he obviously had the op-ed in the New York Times, which also spoke to his connection to Minnesota itself, growing up really close to where George Floyd was killed. And I think, you know, you've seen so many players also sharing their own experiences, their, you know, growing up and facing racism and they don't owe those stories to anyone, but I think when they have these platforms, it really helps fans to understand that this is not a problem that was that we've solved. Like racism is still very prevalent in the US. And I think sometimes people are more open to grappling with that when they hear it from a football player um, 
that they watch every Sunday and love versus, you know, obviously part of why it's still here is that people haven't always grappled with this issue. And so I think it's been really powerful with so many players speaking out more about this. And what's been really interesting too is hearing what the conversations are like within the team. Um, we talked to DJ Humphreys this week and that was pretty interesting too, just hearing about what it's like in the O-line room where it's a pretty diverse group of guys and, you know, people being very candid in these conversations about, wow, I never experienced something like that, but like, I know you and I believe you and I never thought about it that way, but now I understand where you're coming from. Um, and last fifth question for me, you think he's getting tired of the – questions every single week about oh when are you gonna retire like because I'm sure he's getting he's getting that on the road too you know what I mean so like I, I don't know how tired he is of that probably it's his least favorite question for sure um and I think especially when I think he is genuinely someone who takes time at the end of each season to evaluate it instead of deciding in the moment um so, you know, I think while he understands the newsworthiness of the question, since he hasn't decided, it's hard to answer, certainly. Um, yeah. Uh, and you've, you've been on a few of these Zoom calls recently and, you know, since the draft um, and since the, the Cardinals uh, acquired Hopkins, um, is – is there just, you can't really tell like, oh, there's a new energy around the locker room, but is there just kind of a new energy around the team in general? I would say so. Um, I think it was pretty telling a couple of weeks ago when Patrick Peterson was talking about how like, this is probably the best team on paper he's ever been with. And obviously all of that then is affected by the team not being able to actually be with each other in person, um, particularly you know, this is also, the team's only had one year under Cliff Kingsbury. There's still parts of his playbook and his style that they're learning a little bit that I, as hard as you try, you can't totally recreate virtually. Um, but those are things affecting every team around the league, obviously. But yeah, I think there's definitely excitement um, from the guys who have been on the team for a while, just seeing what the Cardinals did this off season between um, you know, bringing in guys like DeAndre Hopkins and then in the draft too. So there's a, a pretty high level of excitement for sure. And speaking of the draft, we can't go a uh, Cardinals conversation without talking about Isaiah Simmons and his versatility. Uh, I got him playing running back. Uh, Jesse, I don't, I don't know where you have him playing. He, he, he can play anywhere. He's he can play off at quarterback. I think. Yeah, he's going to take over for Kyler. Uh, he can play anywhere, but obviously he was drafted as a linebacker. Ooh. Are they just going to use him to cover the, the tight end and also whatever he wants to do, basically? I mean, I say just go all in and put him, like, long snapper. Just <laughs> throw it in chaos. Um, I think it's going to be so different this season than the next few years where, again, this virtual offseason where he's not getting the physical reps on the field, um, perhaps until training camp, that, you know, we've heard so much about how – he is able to adapt to so much and learn so quickly and definitely not taking away from that. But I, I think it's a lot harder when you're not actually on the field with guys. Um, so I think this season, there will be a bit of a curve um, for all rookies, not just for Simmons, but as far as, you know, maybe simplifying things instead of throwing everything at a rookie at once who also is learning the playbook from afar and is not getting those physical reps with the team. Um, so I think year two is where we'll see more of that, like put him wherever, getting real creative with it um, versus whatever happens this year. Have they talked about on, on any of the Zoom calls Have the Cardinals talked about what, you know, Benjamin's role might be coming over, you know, in the draft from, from local product from ASU? Um, nothing too recently. I know they were just really excited to get him. Um, the Cardinals love those local connections. We've seen it with guys the last few years, whether ASU guys or guys who grew up here, like Christian Kirk, Byron Murphy. Um, so I think, you know, that was just a pick that worked well for them in a lot of ways where, you know, I think a lot of people, kind of the theme of the draft were perhaps still surprised that he was available at that spot. Um, but then also just having, you know, that nice local angle uh, made the team really 
excited about him. And can you know, uh, with uh, Chase Edmonds, he kind of gets lost in the conversation. You talk about Kenyon Drake and Eno Benjamin. Chase Edmonds had a couple of really good games last year, and uh, it, I, I just I, I think he could really step up as well. Yeah, I think Chase's. Um, you know, when he has had time on the field, he's made so much of it. Um, obviously, the running back group as a whole last year had all those injuries, but um, I think he's a pretty, you know. Solid guy there, too. Obviously, it's going to run through Kenyon Drake first, but not bad to have Chase Edmonds as a backup. I hate MVP conversation, but I've heard all this Kyler Murray MVP conversation. Don't you think it's a little bit much? Like, he's only a second-year guy. I mean, I guess Lamar Jackson won it in his second year, but but still, it's it's the Cardinals we're talking about. Oh, so league MVP, not just a team MVP? Yeah, yeah. League, I've heard league MVP conversation. Yeah, I think those conversations are, well, I understand people want anything to talk about these days with sports. Feels a little early on that one. Um, I think so much is going to depend on how this team jumps as a whole. Um, Obviously, they were still a five-win team last year, and they made a lot of jumps, particularly toward the end of the season, that I think have people feeling better about where they're headed as a whole. Um, But they've got to get some more wins before I think (laughs) – you know, there's really going to be an MVP conversation around the team. Um, and they've done a lot this offseason, like I said, to stockpile players to build toward that. But um, let's see what happens on the field before we cast any MVP votes. Um, but yeah, I think year two for Kyler will be really exciting just to see where he does jump. Um, we saw growth throughout the end of the season last year, even. Um, the team as a whole and Kyler individually too. So year two is where people, you know, you see that big jump from a lot of people and um, for someone of Kyler's caliber, it'll be really exciting to watch. Uh, I'd be remiss if I didn't talk about this as, as a guy that's from Miami, but uh, with Josh Rosen being traded to the Dolphins uh, because the Cardinals drafted Kyler and now the Dolphins have drafted Tua and he, you know, he had one touchdown and five interceptions last year, Rosen. So where do we think he ends up? Does Do we have any idea? Like, I know you're a Cardinals reporter, but any, like, inkling? Um, that's a good question. I obviously, those are not the numbers you totally want going into um, finding a new team. So hard to say right now. Um, you know, I think he – just from covering him for that one year, the team itself was definitely in shambles. Um, So it was hard to judge sometimes, but back-to-back years of being in those situations, I think also just that's got to take a huge wear on any player going through that, Um, particularly, you know, any quarterback who is one of these top draft picks has been like so prominent his whole life from like, I mean, peewee football, but like high school, especially even at the college level, whether or not your team's, you know, totally clicking on all cylinders. But I think that just to have back to back years to that, like that, I feel for the guy. Oh, um, and, and go ahead, Jesse. Uh, in addition to your, your Cardinals coverage, um, you, you, you cover the Waste Management Phoenix Open. What, what has been your, your favorite thing? Because, you know, the golf doesn't really matter there. Um, what, is, what has been your favorite thing the, the past two years that you have seen uh, out at the, the Phoenix Open? Um, I've had the real joy now covering it three years in a row. So yeah. quite the delight. Um, I think, though, this year, one of my favorite stories I worked on was about um, on the 16th hole. They still have... Um, people who hold the please be quiet signs and so I talked to a lot of them over the course of a few days just on like do you do you think this is gonna work Um, and they were so funny and delightful we're like they know that their role is so different than um, at any other golf course at any other hole even they kind of they know that people won't be quiet um, but they still understand there's kind of like levels within that of like You can be loud, but you can also be like disruptive and rude. Whereas like if everyone's cheering at once, that's different than like one person shouting um, 
terrible things that echo a little louder. Um, so it was really fun just hearing their perspective, um, especially when a lot of them have worked there for, you know, I, for years and years, they've seen the tournament grow um, and the crowds with it, but it was really fun just to talk to them. I feel like I would love that job because you basically don't have to do anything except for stand at that hole. You don't have to enforce it because like people are still getting yelled no matter what. So you just watch the 16th hole all day. <laughs> they do have to have their backs to the action for a lot of it to like face the crowds and hold the signs. Um, so pros and cons, but yeah, when the weather is nice and not too hot and you know, when the environment's fun, like those are all enjoyable still anyway. And kind of a personal question to you. When you were in school or growing up, what did you want to cover? What did you want to do uh, in journalism? Hmm. Um, that's a good question because it shifted a little bit. I graduated from UNC and thought I was going to do mostly video journalism, um, more like documentary style and stuff like that. But then I realized I really liked writing. Um, so it kind of fell together um between later internships and grad school but um always really liked sports and always liked either more featurey pieces or deeper pieces of sports intersecting with other things in society um so i think there's you know so much we can learn from the athletes and coaches we cover when we remember that they're people with full and enriching lives too outside of just what they do on the field um and so you know which obviously we see more and more of every year with just um, people opening up on all these personal levels. But I think that's really powerful for, for fans and for um, just like storytelling as a whole. And uh, hopefully you get to cover the Cardinals in the fall. Hopefully there is football in the fall. Um, make sure to follow Catherine on uh, Twitter at kfits134 and check out her content at azcentral.com. Thank you so much for coming on. Of course. Thanks for having me. And welcome back to the Wise So Serious Show. Thank you again to Catherine Fitzgerald for her time. It was very gracious of her to come on with us on here on the Wise So Serious Show. And Jesse, ready to update those polls. Yeah, so we got three total votes for two polls. Um, oh, no, no, we got more. They'd update it, update it. Okay, we're good, we're good. Is the green apple hubba bubba good? 50-50 never happened. You have to go back to the polls from earlier this week, too. Okay, I will. Um, what's the what's worse to step in, dog poo or gum? We got seventy five percent poo, so Jeremy, you're wrong there. I, I mean, um, yeah, <laughs> poo is horrible, and dog poo like doesn't come out. Um, and we've got some earlier in the week polls. Um, so the first one is uh, excited for those MLB labor talks coming up after the current CBA expires. <laughs> Uh, 70% no. I'm surprised <laughs> for the 30% yes. Those people just want to watch people argue. I think they probably accidentally pressed the yes button. They should televise those. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually, you know, I kind of wish I had. I'd rather watch the labor discussions than baseball games at this point. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. <laughs> I mean, they need to, like, you know how there's C-SPAN where you can watch <laughs> House and Senate debates? And, and, yeah, there's going to be M-SPAN. Just, yeah, yeah. We need. <laughs> But yes, not for Montana or Minneapolis or anything. It's for Major League Baseball. Just MLB like, fan. Maybe, MLB yeah. fan, C fan. Just, just revert ESPNU to be MLB span. Like, yeah, because ESPNU at this point is just Joe Burrow highlights. <laughs> it's bad I, I see a Joe Burrow game on there like every freaking day. <laughs> um. Which way do you prefer to roast marshmallows? 65% golden brown over 35% burned. Um, uh, how, do you like your, how do you like your steak cooked? 46% medium rare, 27% medium, 19% medium well, and 8% well. Um, you know, I, I never said that I, I don't mess with people that, you know, have their steak cooked another way. Like, I'm cool with it, like, and everything. Like, we're, we're all cool. Like, I just like my medium well, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna. I'm sorry. I'm not gonna apologize for it. Well, look. Do you know a person that would say I want my my steak mooing, aka wanting it rare? 
Put it on the pull. Uh, jerk or no jerk, guy who says, I want my steak moving. That was my late grandfather. <laughs> <laughs> that was my late grandfather. He loved and put, also put it on the poll. Was that Matt's late grandfather? Question. Oh, yes. stop. Let's take a trip down memory lane. What was your grandfather's name? Let, let, let's go ahead. James Why? Let, well, let's put some respect on James. He was, he died at 77. Okay. My grandmother turned 82 today. And Happy birthday, uh, Grandma. Grandma yeah, Kling. Grandma Kling, yeah. And, uh, yeah, and he liked his prime rib rare. Okay, good for so, him. He liked it mooing. Yes, he liked it mooing. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he said, do you like it mooing? Now, you do not put jerk or no jerk. You can, <laughs> hold on, I'll tell you how to phrase this poll. Jesse. I just said jerk or no jerk. <laughs> You, no, delete the poll. Okay? Well, I haven't. I haven't actually posted it yet. Okay. Okay. Here's how, he you, has phrase, he here's has how, how you phrase the the, the poll. Uh, do you have to be over the age of seventy to say in a restaurant that you want your steak mooing? No, I feel like forty year olds can say it. No, no, no. Seventy. Everybody said. Everybody says that. Like, no, it's like, you know, it, no. Here's here's what I say. If there's if my food is li- is like taking forever, I'm always like, oh, they're back there. They're slaughtering the they're chicken. They're slaughtering you, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I always say that. I'm like, they're, they're, they're growing the vegetables that I ordered. Like they're picking them off the trees. Yeah, and- like, do you have to be over the age of, of let's say, 50? Let's say 60. You know what's something that my grandpa used to do at restaurants? Uh, when someone would go to the bathroom, he, he'd uh, look at the waiter and go, oh, check, please, we're done. <laughs> you know, like when they came back you got, because we're all e- done eating. It took you so long in the bathroom. <laughs> my great-grandfather tried dining and dashing with my with my grandmother and the, and their family once. It got caught in the parking lot. <laughs> oh, no. You never also, also, Paul, have you have you ever thought about dining and dashing? In a I'm gonna I'm gonna avoid that one. Uh, <laughs> but you know, maybe once we get really famous, sure. But but if if our shows continue to go like today, then I don't know if that's gonna happen. <laughs> it, it, put that on the poll. If our shows end up like the one that we recorded today, will we ever become famous? No, that's that's a disservice to to Catherine. I'm not going to put that on the poll. Minus the Catherine Fitzgerald interview. Not going to do that. <laughs> you can put it on the poll. It's fine. I've done like seven of them. We our social media person is not here today. Yeah, yeah. Where is the social media person? This Probably week? napping. Uh, like napping at at two a.m. He's uh, yeah. This is midday. Like a cat. He sleeps like a cat. It's like three hours here, two hours there, and another hour and another. Well, why couldn't she join us? <laughs> I mean, you know, tired. Laughing. Okay. Um, but well, I we have we miss you, you and hope you come back soon. Mallory, yeah, we miss you. Hope you come yeah, back. Yeah, Mallory. Yeah, we miss you. Um, is Jim Nance the? Uh, no, have you tuned into Ultimate Tag yet? Oh hell no. Seventy-three percent. No, I do not need to see that. That, that season's wow. not going to finish. I'll tell you that for free. You know what? Gonna... You know what shows worse? Holy moly! What? I even like Holy Moly. It's so tacky. It's Rob Riggle and Baker Jake. Mayfield. Baker Mayfield. Go Tess. Go Tess. Great boxing announcer. Terrible football announcer. I um, like the Monday Night Football. Um. Does. Jesse Morrison not know how to make a marshmallow golden brown, so he just burns it because he's frustrated. 71% yes, I definitely know how to <laughs> roast marshmallow. Um, does Adam – this was that's a really good – you got to admit, that's a really good poll. It's not a good poll. It's, it's <laughs> flattering um, angles. Does, that, does Adam Silver have any flattering angles? today first of all he sounded he didn't look like he just woke up from a nap he sounded like he just woke up honestly like i was a little concerned because like i know that a horse voice is a very big sign of of coronavirus so i'm really hoping that the commissioner is okay um but yeah uh 80 percent no on the fact that he he doesn't have any flattering flattering angles um and then 67 percent on the fact that he just sounded like he woke up from a nap um and that'll that'll do it yeah, oh, we know we gotta update the one I just did. Um, one percent, uh, yes, or one hundred percent, yes. On the one, on one person voted. 
on on which poll? There's what is two it? votes. Two votes, yes. For do you have to be over the age of sixty to say you want your steak mooing? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, if you don't want to be a jerk, then yeah. Which is probably the age that you should stop eating your steak mooing. No, isn't it good for you to eat your steak? No. Have you ever read? You don't read anything, so I'm sure you've never read like the little asterisk at the bottom of the menu that says eating uh, practically raw steak or fish uh, can cause serious illness. Okay, we get it. <laughs> All right, Jeremy, you want to wrap this up? I guess. Thank you, everyone, for joining us here on the Wise Out Serious Show Summer Edition with Jesse Morrison, myself, Jeremy Schnell and Matt Kling. We really appreciate you all joining us today and hope you come back next week. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at the letter Y So Serious Show. You can vote on the polls there. Thank you, everyone. Again, we'll see you next week. That's already asleep. <laughs>